Greetings, gorgeous ghouls and freaky fiends, and welcome to Movie Night with Madame Crufelli. Might stunt your growth. All right, you gotta go ahead and smoke it. Nah, I'm saving it for after dinner. Dinner? You mean you got a place for a handout? Sure, over at the friendly. The friendly what? Ain't you ever heard of the friendly mission? Uh, you sure can get some swell soup there and no questions asked. Yeah. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, pal. Well, there it is. Ain't it pretty? Just like I told you. Gorgeous. And the guy who runs it is a soft touch. Yeah? Would thou partake? Would. See the guy handing out the soup? Yeah. He's the guy who runs the joint. I'll give you a personal introduction. Gee. Oh, it's letting, buddy. Where are you from? Uh, from? Oh, I'm a transient. Oh, okay. Oh, evening. I see you brought a needy friend with you tonight. Yeah, he's a pedestrian from Pittsburgh. You're very welcome, my friend. Here you find food for you, buddy. 
as well as comfort for your troubled mind. Yeah, but could I have some soup? Of course, my friend. What happened to your hand? Oh, that's nothing. I just hurt it a little bit. Oh, well, just the same. You better take care of it. Miss Melvin, here's a patient for you. Yeah, but what about the soup? Never mind. There's plenty of soup. I... I'll just change your bandage for you. Yeah, but I... I... Oh, well, Oh, you're in good hands. Oh. Take a bowl of that soup if you don't mind. Certainly. Just a sec. I'll take it off. See, the guy that runs this place sure is one swell guy. Yes, he is. Most places you go to, all they want to do is save your soul. Mr. Wagner realizes a man can get awfully hungry just doing nothing. You bet he can. Have another bowl? No, thanks. Then what about a smoke? Nice cigar. Thanks. Come on, my friend. Follow me. Help yourself. Thanks. Real for fun. I hope you enjoy it. Fingers. Fingers? I'm sorry, mister. You must think I'm somebody else. Oh, no, I don't. I have known you and your work for a long time. I tell you, you've got me pegged wrong. You've got your wires crossed. I don't think so. Don't worry. I'm your friend. Step into my private office. I want to show you something very interesting. What about this? Hey, that's me. What are you doing with this? Never mind. So you are, fingers stolen. All right, all right, so you know me. What's the gimmick? It must have been very hard on you to be inactive for such a long time. But that is all in the past. I have great plans for you. Yes, Carl. Hello, Doc. Send Mr. Stratton up immediately when he arrives. Yes. Hi, Doc. The boss is waiting for you, Stratton. Did you bring my package for you? No, I forgot to pick it up. But you promised me. I gotta have it. Oh, lay off, you rum dumb. Here it is. I, I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thanks, Stratton. Thanks for what? That stuff is slow death. No, it isn't. I'm a doctor. I know. Doctor, my eye. I wouldn't let you treat a good case of dandruff. Mr. Stratton, I'm sure many things will become clear to you. Fingers Dolan! Tiger! I thought you were still doing time. Glad to see you, son. What are you doing here? Mr. Stratton works for me. You see, I like to bring old friends together. Stratton, huh? Yeah. Got a new moniker. 
There is more than a new name in it for you if you join our little partnership. Look, you birds. I know I'm not as quick as I used to be. But these, these are still quick. And they? Sure. Are we going to crack a box tonight? Mr. Stratton, don't be so cruel. You mean you lay out a job, chase the place, and I tune the dial? The language is rather picturesque, the meaning is perfect. And there's nobody like Carl for his end of the job. How do you like that? A flop house for a blind. Well, you guys had me coming and going. Yes. For a minute, I thought I lost the magic touch. Okay. Fingers, it's his job. Now it's your turn, Stratton. Fingers? You heard what I said. But he's a valuable man. He was a valuable man. Hey, are you guys kidding with that talk or what? Do your job, Stratton. But Carl, Take I... off your nerve. Go ahead. Please. Please don't kill me. Give me your chance. I only did you asked me to. I can show you... Oh! Trouble? No trouble at all. Everything was perfect. You act like there's something bothering you. Didn't you get a big haul? I told you everything was perfect. We got a swell haul. I still say there's something bothering you. Is it that new man, Fingers? No. Fingers won't bother anybody anymore. You mean to say he got rid of him without letting me have the body? He can't do that to me. He promised me. It seems he can do anything he pleases. Didn't you get a big enough cut from this last job? I'm not griping about the cut. You know, Doc, that Fingers was a good man. What's to stop him from getting rid of us in the same way? Carl wouldn't do that. He's our friend. Huh? Maybe your friend. Me? I'm getting cut up. You know, it ain't healthy to talk like that. I don't scare so easy. One of these days, I'm going to tail him and see what he does do today. A couple of men tried that before you, and now they're buried. Breakfast, little boy. Come on. Now say good morning to Mommy. Good morning. Come on, say good morning. How about feeding a hungry husband? Certainly, darling. And I have a surprise for you this morning. And I have a surprise for you, too. You finished your book? Oh, another present. To remind you of my love. Oh. They are beautiful. Just like you, my dear. Lord. Nothing is too good for you, my darling. How can you afford to give me such expensive gifts and so often? To what better use could I put the money for my writing? You should save your money. It's not jewels I want. It's you, your companionship. Pretty. I get so lonesome at times. 
Why do you have to stay away from me night after night? How much longer are we going on like this? Not long, my dear. Research for my new book will be finished soon. And then we go far away from here. Good morning, Miss Fears. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, there is nothing more invigorating than a nice, cool drink of fresh mountain spring water. Mr. Atwood, every morning for three years, you start out with the same stimulating conversation. Sometimes I think I'll scream. robberies is definitely the work of a homicidal maniac. Leaving the body of an accomplice on each job proves that. Some of your uniform men are up for promotion. It's up you to earn it. As far as the plain clothes men are concerned, they better be on their toes or they'll find themselves back in uniform. That's all. Mac was sure letting off steam, wasn't he? You ever see an Irish movie? <laughs> oh, I'm going to be missing all this soon. Say, you start drawing that pension next month, don't you? Yep. I kind of hate to retire, but of course it'll be nice being home without those kids yelling cheese at the top. Kids. How I love them. You know, Mark, someday I'm going to have a dozen. Yeah? Well, you know you're happy to get married first, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I am, if I ever get that promotion. You will, son. You'll be a detective before you know it. Mm -hmm. When that happens, I'm going to buy a little place in the country just like you. Work in the garden. Yeah. Well, you know, you've no idea how being a detective will help to catch them go. <laughs> <laughs> Be seeing you, Peter. So long, Mark. The study of abnormal psychology recognizes paranoia as one of the most dangerous types of insanity. Perhaps Mr. Dennison can inform the class why paranoia is so dangerous. Well, the patient suffers from delusions of grandeur. He thinks he's very important, way above those around him. He has a superiority complex. Is that all? No, it's also coupled with a persecution mania, caused by an intense feeling that everyone's against him. So far, you're correct. But you haven't explained why such cases are dangerous. Well, I guess it's because he acts logically. If you didn't study him, you wouldn't know he was maladjusted. And he doesn't hesitate to use force to assert his personality. This leads to an antisocial conduct. Then, Mr. Dennison, I take it you imply they might even enjoy a life of crime? How about a nice corned beef sandwich? Well, that's a deal, but this time the treat's on me. Goldberg's? Goldberg's it is. With that hood's Frankie Mills. Mind me, Pete. Get after him. He's your promotion.
Call this is Sergeant Crawford. Give me Captain Mitchell right away. Come in. I'm sorry, Mr. Wagner. I didn't mean to disturb you. Oh, you never disturbed me. What is it, Judy? Well, I thought I'd consult you before getting your supplies. Uh, if we need them, get them regardless of cost. Those unfortunate souls depend upon us. We must not fear them. I thought you'd see it that way. I'll attend to it at once. Let me clean and bandage it for you. But don't worry. I won't hurt you. Right this way. Come on. Now if you'll just sit down here, I'll fix you up right away. The guy sliced me with a knife. He tried to take my dough. That's too bad. This will sting just a little bit. Dad, that didn't hurt much, did it? It don't hurt at all, Lady. Lady Bell, let me know when he gets here. Nice hot soup out there. That is to be careful. Nice. Bill, you and Joe take a look in the pool hall. can I do for you? Keep your mouth shut. Good. It isn't Frankie Mill. Too bad you recognize me, mister. What's the matter? Have the police after you? Yeah. And you better not do anything to upset this baby. Don't worry. I will not betray you. Yes? Who is there? Uh, just a moment, please. You see it inside here. Good evening, Sergeant. You make a habit of keeping this door locked? Oh, just a precaution. You see, otherwise my guests would be all over the place. Is there something wrong? Yes, there's a dangerous killer loose somewhere in the neighborhood. Indeed. We've got orders to search all these Bowery places. I'd be glad to show you around. What's up there? Uh, just the dormitory. A couple of you boys see what you can find upstairs. This is 
do anything wrong. Yes, the police is looking for someone and thought he might be hiding here. He's a young fellow by the name of Frankie Mills. About 23 years old, medium height and dark hair. Baby face. Why, a man of that description was here a few minutes ago. He was? Are you sure? I'm positive. I bandaged his injured wrist. Where did he go? If he isn't out there, I guess he must have gone. Thank you. No sign of him up there. You folks keep your eyes open. If you see him again, notify police headquarters immediately. Certainly. I'd be happy to cooperate with the police. All right, boys. But I can't leave now. Well, all right. I'll be home in about an hour. You can't relax now. The friends are gone. Who are you? What are you soft open me for? Because I have a proposition with that thing you will like. I see it. Do you make it, sir? No. This represents the difference between my intelligence and the dollar minds of my fellow men. What is with that? Just my house phone. Hello? Tell him to wait. I'll be right down. How would you like to join my organization? Sure. Why not? My associate is downstairs. I want you to meet him. Hello. Daddy? I want you to meet Frankie Mills. Frankie Mills, huh? No wonder the neighborhood is full of cops. This is my dad. What's the matter with him? He's afraid of you, naturally. The way I like it. What are you afraid of? Don't get gay, kid, just because you're handy with the heater. It seems we all have our little fears. All but you, Frankie. You wouldn't believe it, Stratton. But I am afraid of you. <laughs> That's a hot one. Don't laugh. I'm afraid of you because you lost your nerve. What'd I do? Thank you. If you want Stratton's job, you can have it now. Don't fall for that line of talk, kid. You'll cross you like he has everybody else. Afraid of him now, are you? Good work, Frankie. What are you going to do with the step? You shall see. Take care of Mr. Stratton. Dormitory of the dead. I never saw a guy with more angles. These mildew skeletons who sleep so quietly now were once my partners, like Stratton. Duck, how often have I told you to keep that cat from desecrating my graves? Let's go, thank you. Our place is not with the dead. Their work is done. Ours is just beginning. It don't take too long, Doc. Is that guy a real doctor? Yes. Want to want a, a great doctor. Now he's just a human darling. Just a different thing. But he's still a great doctor. And I'll prove it.
I will save you, Stratton. Save you from the dead. Then you belong to me. She'll be home any moment now. Always late. Why can't she be on time just once? But you know, Judy, time is not her own these days. Mrs. Malvern, when are you going to put a stop to all this? Why can't you stay away from that place? Well, after all, Richard, you're the one that can make her understand. You think so? I have a doubt with her. I'm certain you can prove to her which is more important. You or that uh, Carl or whatever his name is who runs that awful place on the Bowery. I'll try. Oh, Richard, you're a dear boy. <laughs> oh, it'll make me the happiest woman in the world. Well, how cozy. Judy. Maybe I'd better leave. Judy, I want to talk to you. And I suppose Mother will be the interpreter. Judy Malvern, what's come over you? Richard has been waiting patiently for over an hour to see you. Of course, what is it? Good night, Mom. Sit down, Alan. Please, sit down. Oh, this won't take very long. Why have you to tell me that's so important? Judy, I, I want you to give up that silly job. Saving humanity. It's ridiculous. And I suppose I should spend the rest of my life on your yacht. Well, I'm not asking so much, considering that... Considering what? Considering that I don't want my future wife wasting her time. Your I... future what? Mm-hmm. I practically told your mother already. I suppose you'd be a good little boy and run along. Come back tomorrow and tell my mother I think you're both having hallucinations. Okay. See now how you feel about it? Let's forget it. Oh, Richard. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I guess it's just because I'm, I'm so tired. That's just it. You stop working down at that mission and take stock of yourself. Judy, do you realize you've given up your friends, your social life, everything? For what? For the opportunity of helping men to privilege. You should be proud of me for that, Richard. Proud of you? For working in the Bowery? That's no place for a girl like you. And that Wagner who runs the place. And what about him? I'd like to meet him, that's all. You and Mr. Wagner have nothing in common. Nothing, except you. Well, so that's it. I never thought of that. You see, it's true. I knew there was another reason for you and Carl spending half your nights down there. You've no idea what a mysterious fondness I have for that man. <laughs> no mystery to me. You're infatuated with him. So you found out. Do you really believe that? Sure I do. Go ahead and have all the fun you want. You and your social work. having one of those horrible nightmares again. Yeah. Is there anything I can get you? A glass of water, maybe? Yes. Go back to bed. You sure? Mm-hmm. Good night. Good night, darling. Ladies and gentlemen. Sir. Yes? I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Certainly. Well, it's about my term paper. I suddenly realize that I know very little about real people. Hmm. What gave you that idea? Well, after all, you can't learn about life cruising around on a yacht. You see, I was thinking of writing what a man thinks just before he dies. It's very unscientific. That's what I mean. So with your permission, I'd like to change to a paper on... Feel qualified to handle it. By all means, make that the subject. 
Thanks a lot, Professor. Sergeant Crawford reporting. You uh, sent for me, sir? I did. Crawford, I want you to turn in your shield. Turn in my shield? You hurt me. By the time Johnny Martin recovered, he'll be on the retired list. I requested a shield be given to you. Trust to you know your first assignment. You bet I do. Good luck, boy. Thank you. Yesterday, that I'd be working with Frankie Mills on a high-class job. Yes, each day brings its little surprises. I meet you later, Frankie. You're all there. I'll be all set. You have the idea now, haven't you? Oh, sure. We cover Frankie's getaway from here. That's a natural. That's right. See, you're smart to figure all this out. <laughs> Sorry, Musty, you'll have to keep moving. George, you come with me. Hurry, boy, I'm getting I can feel the hot breath of the outraged public on my neck. These crimes are a disgrace to the city and a menace to our citizens. You will have to produce results or resign. Chief is on the warpath. We've got to deliver the goods, or we'll all be pounding the pavement. I want the Bowery searched from one end to the other. Yes, sir. Things are sure tough, aren't they? Well, how would you know, slumber? You wouldn't think it to look at him, but I'm down on my luck, too. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't think to look at me that I'm rolling in dough, would you? Big bud, got to see that. Sure. Hey, aren't you forgetting something? Yeah, you got a match? Yeah. Hey, um, mind answering a few questions? Why don't you run up and down Park Avenue? Go on, Peter. Anything I can do for you? Yes, I want to try that suit on in the window. Of course, you can try it on, but not in the window. In the back. Oh, that's a nice piece of my suit. That's good. Can you make me look like a tramp? Can you imagine that? He wants to look like a tramp just coming into my place. Listen, son, I want you to understand this is a police class establishment. How much is that suit? You want to rent or buy? I want to buy. A cash customer. Why don't you say so in the first place? I sold our yacht. Is this your idea to joke? But, Judy, I want you to help me. I'm going to write a term paper on the psychology of the underprivileged. Underprivileged? Why don't you try the millionaire club? I'm on the level, Judy. Remember what you said last night? 
I've been giving a lot of thought. I think it's... I'm sorry, but you'll have to move on. I'll talk to you later. What kind of people are listening here nowadays? Hey, look at this. Not bad. Not bad at all. The Astrophils announced the coming out of their daughter. Coming out. Coming out of what? Well, I guess they keep their kids locked up. What's the matter? Are you literate or something? Come on, let's get to a clean table. Professor, what are you doing here? I beg your pardon. You mean to say that you're not Professor Brenner? Brenner? I'm afraid you're mistaken, young man. Professor, I'd know you any place. Come in. I see it is useless to try to deceive you, Mr. Tennyson. You must be here for the same reason I am, to do some research. You're right. But I intended to keep it a secret until I am ready to reveal my findings. But you don't have to worry about me, Professor. I can keep a secret. I have no doubt about that. What did you bolt the door for? Oh, so we will not be disturbed. You see, Mr. Tennyson, I'm conducting this rescue mission for the purpose of studying men. I bet you gathered some wonderful material. Indeed, I have. Would you like me to show you around? That would be great, Professor. Come. Step in. This is my private office. Here you will find a world of valuable information. I imagine I could. Let's be going to that later. First, I would like you to meet some very interesting characters. Follow me. Mr. Dennison. I am. Uh, this man is an interesting study in psychosis. I suppose you have never met a, a homicidal maniac before. Mm -hmm. He's a... What are you talking about? Ask Frank some questions. Well, I, I don't know where to begin. Ask if it gives him pleasure to take human life. Enjoy killing people? Sure. I get in my way. <laughs> Come. Over here, you will see a perfect specimen of schizophrenia. Duck, get up. Would you like to question him? I guess not. I see you're losing your enthusiasm, Mr. Dennison. Perhaps I should ask you your own question. What question? The one you brought up this morning in the classroom. You see what fear does to one's memory? This morning you wanted to know what a man thinks about just before he dies. That's unscientific. You said yourself you can't ask a dead man. But you can ask yourself, Mr. Dennison. You must be joking. <laughs> Frankie Mears doesn't joke. Do you, Frankie? You can't be serious. This, this is like a crazy nightmare. Think. You have 30 seconds to answer that question. I'm getting out of here. I'm afraid not, Mr. Dennison. 
Please, Professor. What are you thinking? You're mad. Insane. What I think. Go! All yours, Doctor. How are you, my pet? Hungry, eh? Well, you shall have food and a new companion, too. Well, it's only nine o'clock. I want to because Mrs. Dennison just phoned. Richard didn't come home last night, and the whole family is crazy. They thought perhaps you might have seen him. I did see him last night. Where? Well, why did Mr. Dennison came into the mission last night, dressed like a tramp? Richard did that? Well, I can't believe it. Nevertheless, it's true. Well, I'll call her back, and you talk to her. I don't know why she's in such a dither. I mean... Dozens of men every night have been missing for years. Nobody gets excited over them. Hello, Mr. Benson. This is Judy. I just wanted to tell you not to worry about Richard. Yes, he was doing research in the Bowery last night. Oh, Judy. The Bowery? Oh, how can you say he's all right in a place like that? But nothing could possibly happen to him down there. But I don't think that's necessary. Just a minute. She wants me to go to the police. Well, perhaps you're better, dear. But it's so ridiculous. We'll do it just to make her feel better. All right, Mrs. Anderson. I'll go. Did young Dennis explain why he came to the mission? He said he was studying types, doing research work for a college thesis. Tell me, Miss Melbourne, how well do you know this fellow that runs the mission, Carl Wagner? Quite well. Why do you ask? Because Dennison and Frankie Mills were last seen in Wagner's mission. But, but surely you don't suspect that Mr. Wagner had anything to do with their disappearance? Well, I don't know, but I intend to find out. Crawford, you better drop around and see Mr. Wagner right away. Right. He's there only at night. Where is he during the day? I really don't know. But Captain Mitchell, couldn't something be done about it right away? We're doing everything as humanly possible, Mr. Denson. Crawford, you better follow through on this case. Yes, sir, and if it's uh, all right, I'd like to take Thompson with him. Good enough. Thank you. Will you pardon me? Of course. That him, lady? No. Is that him? No. Charles. Why, Judy. Did you know him? Yes. Yes, he was staying at the mission. What happened to him? This one fell from a tall building. That's dreadful. Across the street from the jewelry store, just as it was being robbed. I'll give you a copy. Pardon me, is this Professor Brenner's office? Why, yes, it is. May I see him? Oh, I'm sorry. He isn't in. I believe he just left for home. I wonder if you'd give me his home address. Oh, I can't give out that information. I'm Detective Crawford from police headquarters. I wanted to talk to the professor about uh, one of his students, Richard Dennison. Oh, I see. Well, just a minute and I'll give it to you. Here you are. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right, Thompson. I thought you'd gone home. There were two men here to see you. Policemen. Police? Yes, they just left. I'll try and stop Never them. mind. Did they say what they wanted? They wanted to talk to you about Richard Dennison. I gave them your home address. Was that all right? Yes. Quite all right. Brenner? Yes. We'd like to talk to your husband. 
He isn't on. But I'm expecting him any moment. Won't you please come in? Well, yes, thank you. I'm uh, Detective Crawford, and this is Detective Thompson. Detective? Oh, don't be alarmed. We uh, merely want to question the professor about one of his students. Oh, I see. Won't you please be seated? Thank you. Is uh, this the professor? Yes. A lovely picture, don't you think? Yes, it is. Thompson. Where have you seen him before? Why, that's Carl Wagner. Down in the Bowery. Why, he's double. What are you saying? Mrs. Brenner, have you ever had reason to suspect your husband of leading a double life? That's ridiculous. My husband is a famed psychologist. That's only the half of it. This man is also known as Carl Wagner, and he operates a mission in the Bowery, the one where Richard Dennison was last seen. And we have reason to believe that he's using the place to cover criminal activities. That explains his nightly absence from home. Expensive jewelry. And those horrible nightmares. I'm uh, sorry, Mrs. Brenner, but we'll have to take you to headquarters for questioning. I understand. I'm quite willing to go. I get my hat and coat. Captain Mitchell, this is Pete Crawford. I'm at the Brenner home. You'd better prepare yourself for a thunderbolt. I've just discovered that Professor Brenner is none other than Carl Wagner of the Friendly Mission. That's right, and we're bringing Mrs. Brenner in for questioning. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Thompson, you'd better run her in. I uh, think I'll stay here and pick up the professor. Long enough to get that code. Mrs. Brenner? Oh, Mrs. Brenner. Judy? Well, what is this? Where did you come from? I can't tell you that. Why not? Carl would kill me. You mustn't let him know you didn't see me. Oh, don't be fantastic. But well, Carl wouldn't hurt anybody. I, I know that. I mean, he, he just wouldn't like it. Well, well, I'm your friend, Doc. You know you can trust me. I know that, Miss Judy. I, I want you to do me a favor. I, 
I'll be glad to. You show me what's behind that bookcase. No, no, I mustn't. Carl wouldn't like it. What was it you wanted to do? I want you to get a prescription filled for me. Will you? Right away? It comes in small bottles. What do you want this for? It's good for me. I, I'm a doctor. I know what's good for me. If I get this filled, will you show me what's in there? If you keep it a secret and get it for me right away. All right. You stay here. Be right back. What do you got? Oh, that's another thousand, I owe you. That's six G's, all the getty you owe me. What do you mean, six? Five. Six. Five. Trying to make a liar out of me for a crummy thousand. Why, I'll take you and I... Will you do me a favor, please? Shoe, Miss Judy. Run down to the drugstore and get this prescription pill. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, sir. Sorry to break up your game. But he'll be back soon. Oh, that's all right. You just saved me five thousand dollars. I sent one of the boys at you. Come on now, open up. Don't you ever tell a soul. Let's go back now. What's behind that door? It's just a little closet where I keep brooms and paint. It's only my cat. But you can't keep her locked up like that. Oh, she likes it in there. Don't be silly. She's crying, poor thing. Open the door. I, I can't. You must go now, Miss Judy. Not until you let the cat out. No, no. You must go back. You want that prescription bill, don't you? Never say a word about this. Why did you allow her to come down here? She had nothing to do with it. Be quiet. The police are right, you're seen. Richard Dennison did you no harm and you, you kill him. What do you propose to do about it? Here is a little surprise for you, Ben. You didn't tell me the girl was in on this deal. She is not. So you know what to do. Nothing doing. Don't tell me that you are getting sentimental. Killing women ain't a part of my racket. Do what you are told. Why don't you let her alone? She didn't do anything. Shut up, you fool. Be careful, the girl, that I get the stuff. Outside. All right, you boys, play out of here.
know the very place for you to hide, where no one will ever find you. Come with me. I prepared this for just such an occasion. anywhere but the Bowery. Yes, Richard. We'll have six kids, three boys and three girls. Yes, Richard. Come here. Can't you do anything besides say, yes, Richard? Yes, Richard. Thanks so much for watching with me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's feature presentation, please be sure to stab that subscribe button and slash that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. And if you haven't already, be sure to visit MadamCrufelli.com to sign up for the mailing list so you don't miss out on any horror happenings, movie reviews coming up, movie nights, and any special little goodies I have for you. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.